Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. All four of them today in the Prague Corner, where today we're looking at a very, very fine record from the great Polish band Riverside. Are they progressive metal? I don't know. I like to call them heavy Prague. Uh, they've got plenty of Prague in their DNA, but there's some medley moments. Uh, they uh, put out their first album in 2003, Out of Myself. Uh, it was released only in Poland. And then Laser's Edge picked it up, put a new album cover on it with the great Travis Smith artwork, who'd been doing all their albums until this new one. Uh, 2005, their second album, Second Life Syndrome. Awesome record. Really got people's attention. That was the one that really put their uh, name out there, put them on the map. 2007, saw Rapid Eye Movement. 2009, they went a little heavier with Anno Domini High Definition. 2013, saw Shrine of the New Generation Slaves. Then they kind of went a little more song-oriented with 2015's Fear, Love, Fear, and the Time Machine. Probably my favorite Riverside album. I love that thing. And then uh, their guitarist, Peter Grzynski, died. And uh, they put out uh, like a soundtrack, Eye, Eye of the Soundscape in 2016, which was just a bunch of, uh, you know, instrumental stuff, which was really cool. Uh, Peter Grzynski died uh, February 21st, 2016 in Warsaw. Uh, the next year, they dropped their seventh album, Wasteland, as a three-piece. And now they return uh, with a brand new Guitar player in tow, uh, new artwork from a brand new artist. Uh, Travis Smith is not uh, doing the artwork on this one. And it really does sound like a whole different thing going on here for the band. Um, it's a new sound almost, right? It's uh, Mario's dude on bass and vocals, of course, like always. He's joined by Peter Kozarodsky, who has been with them from the beginning on drums. On keyboards, you have Michael Lapage, who uh, has been with the band since the second album. And the new kid is uh, uh, Marcij Meller on guitar. He sounds really, really great. Kind of a second coming of Alex Lifeson in some places we'll talk about. The band was formed when the two Peters, Grzynski and Kozarodsky, were driving around. They were both in uh, metal bands. Kozarodsky was in a band called Dominion, and Grzynski was in a band called Unnamed. And they're driving around, and they're listening to Marillion. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, they found a guy named Jacek uh, Melniki, who was a producer and a keyboard player. He played keys on that first album. And then, of course, they got the great singer, songwriter, bass player, Marios, and the band was formed. And there's been very little turnover. The keyboard player changed after the first album, and then Peter Grzynski died, so we have a new keyboard player. But, you know, aside from that, it's been pretty, uh, pretty steady, pretty static lineup, and it really pays off. These guys have been doing it for a long, long time, and this new album is just terrific. It starts off with a song called Friend or Foe, which was uh, the third single released uh, so far off this record. People have said it sounds like Aha, and it really does. You know, Ultravox, maybe even a flock of seagulls or that band Icicle Works from the 80s definitely has those icy, chilly 80s keyboards going on. And then you get the, the bass synth, the throb going on throughout it. Kind of almost makes you think of uh, Turn It On Again by Genesis of so the 80s influence is really strong on this song. It's got a really great chorus, and then it's got this heavy riff in the middle that reminds you that you're listening to Riverside. It ends with the kind of a techno groove, which is really cool. It's pretty catchy. I like it. Second song, Landmine Blast. It's a lot heavier. This one's in G minor, whereas the first song was in E major, so it had that bright, you know, shiny kind of feel to it. G minor is a real dark key signature to be in, and we're definitely in darker territory here. It's got a real trebly bass figure that Marios is playing. It's, it's wild, it's weird, and a bizarre time signature. Uh, the darker mood continues, and then at the three-minute mark, you got this weird breakdown with these polyrhythmic things going on on guitar and keyboards. Pretty cool, pretty cool track. Next up is uh, Big Tech Brother. Starts with a robot voice telling you... Uh, 
you know, I don't know what he's telling you to do, but I don't like it. It didn't need to be there. Uh, and then a chunky bass line comes in and 14, eight time is really, really, uh, powerful and moving and and it, it, it's got that propel uh that locomotive kind of thing going on i really like it and then the brass uh, uh patch on the synthesizers comes in and that sounds really cool and then as the song progresses you get into a really heavy riffage uh with some choir voicings on keyboards and then you get that really good vocal melody and then it fades out good track solid track next up fourth song post truth this is an e minor so again it's pretty dark but it's got this heavy prog feel with hammond organ in seven eight it's great he's talking about it was not my best day today and it's making me think a lot of these songs are all about social media, technology, um, how, you know, it's not actually bringing us together. It's actually dividing us. And all these songs have those kinds of uh, themes running throughout them, kind of making me think of uh, the new Aaron Cliff Experiment album, uh, The Age of Misinformation, has a lot of the same thematic things going on there. Uh, Verbal Delirium on their latest album, Neon Eye Cage, covers some of this territory, too. Uh, I love lost my temper again. Mario's is singing about black is white and white is black and can't tell day from night. Everything's upside down. Everything's crazy in this post-truth world. Good, good tune. Next up is the longest song on the album, The Place Where I Belong. It's bizarre. It starts out with uh, some acoustic strumming and all the chords he's playing are major key. So I don't know what key we're in here. Uh, he's going from A to F major to E major. All these major chords that make me really confused about what key we're in. Uh, yeah, we, we finally get uh, settled down into the key of A with a pretty funky bass line, and it really does sound like classic rock a little bit here with that Hammond organ going. He's talking about the extreme right or the extreme left and all the anger that he feels and, uh, you know, how much can you be lied to, I think is the line in the song. It's really cool. I love it. It's maybe a little bit long, but I do like that long extended outro with some really beautiful chords and some great guitar and keyboard stuff going on really interesting good song don't love it i wish it were maybe a, a little more going on in a 13 minute song but they certainly write the ship on the last two tracks uh next up is my favorite song of the album it's called i'm done with you and it starts with this amazing bass line that makes me think of uh, muse on absolution that song hysteria maybe uh and then you've got this eastern riff going on with the hammond organ and uh, man when mario sings Tell me I lost my way. Oh, man, you can hear that thing live in your head. You know it's going to be a powerhouse in the live setting. Definitely my favorite song on the album. You know, Take Your Poison From My Soul. And then at the end, he's singing Far Away. Yeah, what a great track, man. I really dig this thing. And then the album ends with another really, really good song. Uh, another song that was already released as a single, uh, Self Aware. Um, I really like it. It starts in B minor uh, with a basic classic rock guitar riff with some Hammond organ coming in. And then the verses shift over into A, which is kind of cool how they do that. And then you get this reggae break. I mean, it's unexpected. It's so cool. Yeah, it makes you think of Rush's New World Man or something like that. But it just fits. It's so cool. It's so awesome. I really, really dig it. Um, and then after that, it goes through again, you know, with the verse and the chorus, and then you get the reggae break again. And then it goes into some weird eighties rush breakdown where the new kid in town, Meller is playing his best Alex Lifeson riffs. It sounds for all the world, like outtakes from, uh, you know, power windows or grace under pressure. It's just incredible. The last idea, uh, in the song and on this album is unsubscribe the ones who make us hostile. And that's a pretty good. Good, uh, pretty good advice for Mario's Duda. You know, we all live in this uh, this world now where we're in a pressure cooker. You know, we all live in a in an echo chamber where none of us is hearing each other. We're not hearing the other side. We we just want to hear the sound of our own voice. And social media makes that way too easy. You know, the album also touches upon identity and stuff like that. The title of the album is eight letters long, which follows kind of a tradition that Riverside did. Uh, their third album had three words. Their fourth album had four words. Their fifth album had five. Their sixth album had six words. 
Uh, their seventh album, they took a break from it, but they put a little seven in the album cover. Now we've got album number eight, and instead of eight words long, it's eight letters long. I guess Mario, Mario's Duda likes that uh, numerology type of stuff, but I'm not going to hold it against him. Uh, album is produced wonderfully by the great G.G. Garth Richardson, who I am a humongous fan of. I love his production. He produced my three favorite Biffy Clyro albums, Puzzles, Opposites, and Only Revolutions. All three of those albums are absolutely incredible. And uh, he takes a lot of that same type of production style that he perfected with Biffy Clyro. And he's using it here with Riverside, another band that's, you know, prog adjacent, I guess. He can't put a capital P on Riverside. They got too much metal. They got too much other stuff going on in their music to be considered, you know, retro prog in any sense of the matter. But G.G. Richardson, the son of the great Jack Richardson, who produced uh, The Guess Who, amongst many, many others. What a fine, fine job he did on this album. It's it's terrific. There are two bonus tracks. I have not heard them. I just got the basic advanced uh, copy of this with the seven tracks, and I like all seven of them. So what is my score going to be on this? Yeah, it's not perfect. It's probably not my favorite Riverside album, but it's real, real close. I'm going to give this sucker four and a half headphones, and I'm feeling real, real good about it. Anyway, I love you guys. Tomorrow, you are in for a real treat as we rank the entire studio discography of the great Steve Hackett. We're going to be looking at and ranking all 28 albums. It's going to be a good time. Stick around for that. Anyway, I love you guys so much. I hope you had a great weekend. I am Scott. You are in the Prague Corner. And, you know, peace in the Middle East, my friends. God save the king. And Archie, too. <laughs>